a student at Lehigh University uh, one year before the war started. So uh, a lot of us, uh, as soon as it started, left college and uh, went into different types of uh, assignments. I like airplanes, so I joined the Air Force. Went into pilot training. I didn't quite make it in pilot training. I had about eight or nine hours. The second choice was bombardier school. We flew a bombardier a school, a uh, two-man crew, and uh, it took us about four months to go through bombardier school. They gave us a complete course of what we could expect in combat. From then, went to combat. Uh, they gave us a crew, got a 10-man crew. We trained for about uh, three months uh, as a crew, and uh, then they sent us overseas. We were assigned to the 8th Air Force, which was the largest at the time, that was in England. The particular mission that you're talking about here was the first one we went on, and uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, Ritz, France, next to the Spanish border, the target was an advanced pursuit field. The bomb bay in an airplane in a B-24 is very narrow. And this catwalk that you see here is only about nine inches wide. No army wires on the side, no rail, nine inches that you have to keep your feet on. And at the top where your shoulders would be, it's about 18 inches, very tight. You had four racks on there, up in the nose and back a little further. And on those racks, you had five different stations. And due to the shape of the fuselage of the airplane and the racks getting wider, at the bottom where it was narrow, you could put in three bombs. The situation involved here is that when you drop these, Naturally, the bottom ones have to fall out first, then up the sequence. In this situation, before we dropped anything, just arming the wires, these two up here, four bombs, came down and landed here. These did not release. They landed on top. Why that particular station jammed, we do not know. The 100-pound bomb was especially well designed for airfields, so that's why they armored that day with 100-pound bomb. What Ray experienced was an attempt to better utilize the B-24 as a bombing platform. Um, since they were using 100-pound munitions, the bomber was limited in the number of stations where you could actually attach these munitions. So it would be limited to just 20 100 pound munitions, 2,000 pounds roughly. However, the capacity of the bomber was over 8,000 pounds that it could actually carry. And so the armorers came up with an idea of adding some additional munitions to each one of the stations. So they, as the operational reports indicated, they were able to load 40 weapons in, on each of the aircraft. The problem was when you, when you put those additional weapons in there and they weren't all on a single station, you had the potential problem where they may not all release properly. We started out at about 16,000 feet and uh, we let down because of the situation. You take oxygen above 10,000 and wear a mask. You couldn't get out here in this Bombay area with a mask on. So the engineer, who happened to be the tail gunner also, he and I went down to look at it. If they'd have fallen out by themselves, the props are just a small propeller. The wire that goes to the bomb comes down and goes through that while you're flying as a safety factor so that the bomb will not get, uh, as we would say, hot. As soon as that bomb drops a couple of inches, that wire pulls out. Naturally, the wire was out of the nose. After a, a, a minute of the air spinning, the props fell off. These bombs were hot. The first thing was you're trying to keep them from moving and dropping because if these had released, 
and these, which were hot, fell just to the bottom of the Bombay. They would explode. Any movement, any bumping against part of the catwalk, against anything like that would have detonated those. It's a nightmare. That's all I can tell you. It is. And it happened on the first mission, and you still had 29 more to go. I never had any, I, I had small emergencies on the other 29 missions left, but nothing like this. They had to be picked up by hand. The bomb is about four, about four, four and a half feet long. And on the top is a lug about, not quite, you could just really get two fingers in it. Pick that up, that was the only way to pick it up. The tail gunner did the same thing on the ones in the back. We picked those up and the two of us talked to each other to drop that bomb as it was. The problem is the two of you have to let go at the same time. Otherwise, one of you is going to be hanging on to this thing and you're going to go off the catwalk and go with it. There wasn't any disturbance as far as rough air goes or anything like that. The airplane wasn't bouncing around. After it was triggered several times and we took the other bombs off the top, it released by itself. Fortunately, we did get that coordinated and uh, Handling live material is uh, its a nightmare. It hit us by a surprise, that's all. Yeah, uh, it was just an emergency that came up and you had to do the best you could thinking of what you were doing to save the whole crew. It's a survival situation, that's it. You're thankful to be, to be on the ground. That's about the best I can describe it to you, that you made it. Well, you hope something like that would never happen again, but. Uh, things like this, they did not train you for. They didn't think that would ever happen. Together, they went down, saw the situation. There was no tech order. There was no emergency procedure that provided the substance for what they should do. It was basically ingenuity that said, we've somehow got to get these released weapons that are live out of this airplane. We can't land this way. Uh, because they will jostle around. We can't even fly back this way safely because if you hit turbulence, you would detonate those weapons. So somehow, Ray and Sergeant Waddle had to get these weapons out of the airplane. They're the, the real heroes of this story. This was miraculous. The, they did lose the airplane just in some kind of turbulence or bumping it, but to do this manually is just an amazing feat of courage and ingenuity.